I thought it was over. You're a sure professional because you write your own compilers, okay? I have a 20,000 line divine intellect op, uh, compiler that operates just in time and ahead of time. You seem to be in denial. Once you fucking download my 2 meg, you can download my 2 meg distribution that has all the source code on it and you can compile with my fucking compiler. How am I getting a memory? Am I even... why God chose me, and he gave me divine intellect. This is divine intellect. Isn't it obvious? What is up, YouTube? I'm back. Code Difference back. We're going hard this year. I hope everybody liked the intro because that's a little glimpse of what's to come. 2026, we're going crazy. Uh, 2025 was preparation. We were locked in. No uploads, but I was still working all year, no breaks. Uh, 2026 though, it's game time. You know what I mean? What I'm going to be showing today is my project, my compiler for my programming language that I have actually made. The language is called Blink, because if you blink, you'll miss it. That's how fast it is. <laughs> um, anyway, but that's pretty much it. We're just going to get into it now. I'll show three examples of my language, and then I'll just go over some stuff. My friend said, you can't be making 25 minute YouTube videos. You gotta, you gotta stay like under 15, and he's right, and that's what I'm gonna try to do today. This is my first example. It's gonna show, I guess, three cool things with the language. One, we have an array. Oh no, we have a class, which just contains an array. The class is list. Uh, we have a function, which takes a lambda. And yeah, we have manual memory management. So this is, you know, three things. I'll show the fourth once I get to it in this example. Um, we have support for objects on the heap, my class right here, like my list. We have support for lambdas like this. Um, we have ma manual memory management just because I don't want a garbage collector. Uh, and eventually we will have RAII like modern C++, but for now, just to have something we have manual memory, manual memory management uh so yeah let's take a look at this fold left takes a function here a lambda which takes two integers returns an integer it takes an accumulator which is an integer and a list object and so essentially you could imagine that eventually this will have generics but for right now, we just have integers. Uh, we, we have every primitive type, except for characters, actually, in the language. But we don't have support for generics and uh, inheritance and stuff like that. So we iterate over the array. We're able to do this for each loop, even though this is a uh, regular static array, just because the length is known at compile time for arrays like that. Um, and then we just apply our lambda function on it and we return accumulator. So what this is just gonna do, it's, it's gonna sum up every number from one to 10 and return it. So let's actually just take a look at what that uh, returns. So I'm about to compile my example for each. It's gonna give us an object file called new output.o. When I run that, I'll get the return code and we'll be able to see what it returns. It should return 55 because of the sum from one to 10 is 55. Okay, we got our new output, we return it, we could check the exit code like this, and it gives us 55. Let's take a look at this right now, annotations. This one's pretty cool because this shows yet another thing in my programming language. Um, we can annotate any function prototype or definition with at C, and what this will do is it'll look in the C library for this function puts. Since puts exist in the C library, we can use it. I, don't, I have not implemented IO or printing, anything like that, 
Um, so we just use the C puts function. One of the next things on the list is variadic arguments for functions, but just for functions that are annotated with at C. That way we can call printf and have like some nice formatted prints. But other than that, right now we're just using puts. So this should print out hello world. It's going to create two new point objects with x, y's at 10, 10 and 20, 20. And then let's skip this line right now. Oh, uh, and then we'll have MP is the midpoint between P and P2, which should just be uh, at 15, 15. And then O prime, you see how we have this method midpoint, but then we have this function midpoint. That was just a little uh, way to show that eventually these this midpoint thing gets uh, extracted from the class and then mangled into a uh, actual function that takes a hidden first argument, which is the variable we're projecting this method call from, or I suppose invoking. So O prime is just the midpoint of 10 and zero, so that should just be five. And then we'll return uh, 15, right? MP.x plus five, so that should give us 20. And of course we free the three variables. Oops, let's take a look at that. Vote complete. Now it should print out hello world, but also when we call this midpoint method, it should say creating midpoint struct, right? And then if we check the exit code, it should be about 20. Yes, 20. Uh, we can also check on valgrind just to make sure when we do those freeze, um, everything is actually freed in memory and we're not getting any memory leaks. Yep, for allocations for freeze, we are good to go. Now let's, we'll show our lambda function. This is, I suppose, a little bit more of an in-depth look at lambdas. And I think I will briefly go into how lambdas were implemented because this did take me almost a week straight of working on it, the last week of 2025. Uh, we have a function here, takes lambda. It does what you would think. It takes a lambda. It also takes an x uh, integer, which is not an i32, not an int, but rather an unsigned short, a u8. Um, we have add two numbers. This just takes two numbers and adds them. Uh, and then here in main, we're gonna have, we're gonna wrap add two numbers with this variable box. That way we can then free it. I ran into an issue where if I put add two numbers here, based because of how we implement lambdas, it creates a temporary struct on the heap, which never gets freed because we never actually have access to it in our code. And I, I don't have anything to automatically free a temporary lambda like that. I feel like that might just slow down code. So I think it'd be better for people to just wrap it in a box. So yeah, uh, we take a lambda or we send that add two numbers function to takes lambda uh, and we send the integer five. We cast it to a U8 because all integers are by default I32s or ints. Uh, and so temp should be, if we take this, box it should be 25 right because we add 10 and 10 and then add 5 and then we say okay here x is 10 and our lambda here mult we capture x this is just like the c plus plus lambda or closure specification you put it in the brackets uh, we capture x then we take two arguments for this lambda we multiply them and then add x so we just capture x from the scope that the lambda was defined in. And then we have uh, temp2 is going to be takes lambda. We take this lambda we just defined and then 5. So then here takes lambda should say f of 10, 10, which is going to be 110. And then we add 5, 115. So 115 plus this result was 25 should be 140. We free the lambda, we free box, and then we just send temp plus temp2, run it, 140. And of course, in our lambdas, we can also um, call other functions, right? So just for fun, I suppose, let's have at c fun puts s, which is a string, and let's call that here, hello from lambda. Let's compile that again, run it. We actually do get printed out, hello from Lambda. 
and of course it still returns the same 140. So that's pretty much it. I will go over how lambdas are implemented just because it's interesting and I do want a little bit more of a uh, informational part of the video. So this is our for each and it takes a lambda here and we define a lambda up here. So let's take a look at what the AST abstract syntax tree looks like after we lift up all of the lambdas. That's the very last thing we do before we actually start the code generation. So here we have this struct lambda i32 i32 and then returns an i32 and it has two fields. One is an environment pointer which is null uh, by default and it's of type i8 star. It's an i8 pointer. In LLVM that's essentially just a void pointer. There is no void pointer in LLVM uh, and actually no pointers really have types so it's, we could just make it whatever we want. Um, and then we have our lambda pointer, which is actually a function pointer, as you can see by this syntax here. And also it is set to null originally. We can look at fold left, or actually let's take a look at main first. Main, we declare our sum.env. This is not in the example code that was written. This is generated. So we declare our environment with this period here just because a user can never type a period in a variable name otherwise it would become a field access of a uh, variable. So it is the env4 lambda i32 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 casted to an i8 pointer. This environment struct is empty because our lambda sum didn't capture anything. There's no brackets here. We don't capture any outside variable. Then we declare sum, which is of that lambda struct type, and we set environment pointer equal to some environment, and lambda pointer equal to this name here, lifted for dot lambda i32. And if we look at this, this is our lambda function actually. The only difference is we add a special first argument here the i8 pointer, some environment, and then we load the environment here. Or we don't really load anything, we just cast the sum environment from an i8 star to that class environment lambda, whatever. And then we just return the same thing. We essentially just have copied the lambda body into the rest of the function here. And then back in main, we say, okay, now sum fun is going to be the variable sum, which is a lambda struct, and then we access the field lambda pointer. That's just because after we declare a lambda, um, if it is used anywhere in that function that we declared it in, we do this. If not, it's okay. This is obviously never used and it'll get removed out uh, by the optimization passes after we generate the LLVM code. So then we pass sum, which is the struct, to our fold left function. And then here you could see in fold left, we immediately start accessing stuff from that variable. In our fold left, we just start the iteration right away. But in this fold left, we say, okay, our temporary variable here is f dot lambda pointer and then when we actually call the lambda we call this lambda pointer and then we also send over the environment f dot env pointer is accessed up here and stored in this variable All right now you may be saying okay why are we sending the environment nothing's used that's just to keep everything simple because even though in this case our lambda doesn't capture anything from the environment that it was declared in there will be cases where other lambdas will and we can just reuse this lambda for any lambda that takes an i32 a second i32 and returns an i32 why can we do that because the lambda pointer type is always going to be the same it's always going to be a pointer to a function that takes those two variables and returns another integer the environment pointer 
is the same for all lambdas, regardless of their type, because we cast it to an I8 star, a void star, a generic type. So let's actually take a look instead at the lambda here. Let's ignore how ugly it all looks after it gets desugared and uh, we generate some code. Here, malt environment actually does contain x. So just like how before in the lambda that we lifted up, we cast the i8 star to the environment type, here, we actually are accessing now multi-nv.x. We load x, so that way then we can use it throughout the lambda, because we just copy all of the statements from the lambda into the lifted lambda function. And then we have here, since we did pass box, which is just the add to numbers function, we have to wrap it around, uh, we have to wrap the actual global function around some lifted lambda function. And we don't use the environment at all, so it's fine, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty cool project. You guys can check out anything else in the repository that I'll link below. Um, maybe I will briefly cover how this works. We lex and parse, type check, and desugar everything in OCaml. And then we pass the AST from OCaml to C++ via some FFI code I had to write. And then we actually do the code gen of LLVM in C++ using the API. And the LLVM looks like this uh, for the last example. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any comments, leave them. Like the video, subscribe if you're not. Yeah, have a good one. 2026, we going hard.